Welcome back to the blockchain in JavaScript series. In the previous three videos, we have created a simple blockchain in JavaScript. We added proof of work and we added transactions and mining rewards. But there is a small problem with our current version. And that is that anyone can make any transaction that he wants. So effectively, you can make a transaction and spend coins that aren't yours. So to solve that, we are going to make it mandatory for transactions to be signed with a private and public key. That way you can only spend coins in a wallet if you have the private key of it. Before we do all that, let's take our time and quickly clean up the main.js file. Right now, this file contains a bunch of classes and it contains some test code. I'm going to leave the test code in main.js but I'm going to select all of our classes, including our SHA-256 import. I'm going to cut it and we're going to put those in their own file. We're going to make a new file called blockchain.js. I'm going to paste that in there. And then we're going to export our blockchain and our transaction class because we need that here in our main.js file. So in blockchain.js at the end of the file, we're going to say module.exports.blockchain equals blockchain and module.exports.transaction equals transaction. And then we're going to import these two in our main.js file. We're going to say const blockchain and transaction equals require dot slash blockchain. All right, so our main.js file should still work. Next up, we're going to make a new file to generate our private and public key to actually make ourselves a wallet. So I'm going to go into our source directory. We're going to make a new file and we're going to call that keygenerator.js. And in this file, we're going to import a library called elliptic. We're going to call it EC, require elliptic. And this library will allow us to generate a public and private key. It also has methods to sign something and also a method to verify a signature. So let's install that library. I'm going to open up the terminal and we're going to say npm install elliptic. All right, that's it. Let's hide our terminal again. Then we're going to make an instance of elliptic. We're going to say EC equals new EC. And then in here we have to pass the elliptic curve that we want to use. You can use any elliptic curve that you want. But in this video, I'm going to use SECP 256K1. This is the algorithm that's also the basis of Bitcoin wallets. Then we're going to generate a key pair. We're going to say const key equals ec.gen key pair. And then we're going to extract our public key, which is key.getPublic. And we want that in a hex format. And we're going to do the same thing for our private key. We're going to say get private also as a hex string. And then we're going to show them on our console. I'm going to log an empty line just for clarity. And then I'm going to say console.log private key is the private key. And we're going to log another empty line. And then we're going to say console.log public key equals public key. All right, let's save the file and let's run it to see if we now have a private and public key. I'm going to open up the terminal. I'm going to change directories into SRC. And then I'm going to run node keygenerator.js. And sure enough, there is our public and our private key. Now we're going to need these two to sign transactions, but also to verify our balance, what money is in our wallet. So I'm just going to copy them and I'm going to make a new file, just paste it in here and then we can use them in a minute. I'm going to hide the terminal again and now we can start changing our blockchain classes. Let's go to blockchain.js and let's start at the top by changing transaction. So a transaction contains right now a from address, a to address and an amount, and that's it. 
But what we also need to do is we need to sign this transaction and we need a method that can check if the signature on this transaction is indeed valid. So we're going to make a few new functions. We're going to make a method called calculate hash. And this will return the SHA-256 hash of that transaction. Why is this important? Well, it's this hash that we're going to sign with our private key. We're not going to sign all the data in our transaction. We're just going to sign the hash of our transaction. So in here, we're going to say return SHA-256. And we're going to take the from address, the to address, and the amount. And we're going to hash those together. And then we're also going to convert them to a string. Then we're going to make a method called sign transaction. And sign transaction will receive a signing key. So if you want to sign a transaction, we have to give it our private and public key pair. Now, signing key will be the object that we got from our elliptic library. So if I open up the key generator, it will be this object right here. And this object contains get public and get private as methods. So let's go back to blockchain and let's start by creating the hash of our transaction. So we're going to say hash TX equals this dot calculate hash. Then we're going to create a signature. We're going to say const sig equals. We're going to take our signing key. What are we going to sign? We're going to sign the hash of our transaction and we'll do that in base 64. And then we're going to store this signature into this transaction. So we're going to say this dot signature equals signature to DER, which is a special format. And we want this in hex form. Now we can also add another check here. Before we sign a transaction, we can check if your public key equals the from address. Remember that you can only spend coins from the wallet that you have the private key for. And because the private key is linked to the public key, that means that the from address in our transaction has to equal your public key. So we're going to say if the public key, the hex version, does not equal the from address of this transaction, then we're going to throw a new error. And we're going to say you cannot sign transactions for other wallets. Which makes sense. All right, now let's make another method. And this method is going to verify if our transaction has been correctly signed. Now there's one special transaction that we have to take into account. And that is our mining reward. Remember that if I scroll down to blockchain, if you mine a block, you get a mining reward. And this mining reward is a transaction that goes from the null address to your mining reward address. So we need to take that in account because mining reward transactions aren't signed, but yet they are valid. So we're going to scroll up and we're going to create a small if function. And we're going to say that if the from address in this transaction is null, then we're just going to assume that this transaction is valid. If the from address is filled in, however, we have to do additional checks. So let's first check if there is a signature. If there isn't a signature in this transaction or the signature is just empty, then we're going to throw an error as well. We're going to say throw a new error, no signature in this transaction. Now, if we're still verifying, that means that the transaction is not from the null address. It has a signature. And then we have to, of course, verify that the transaction was signed with the correct key. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new public key object from the from address, because remember, the from address is a public key. So we're going to say const public key equals we're going to use our elliptic curve library again, we're going to say EC dot key from public, we're going to pass along the public key that we want to convert into this key object. And we're going to say that it's in form hex. And then we're going to use the public key dot verify function. What do we want to verify? Well, we want to verify that the hash of this block has been signed by this dot signature. 
And now, of course, we're using EC here, so we have to import it as well. So I'm going to go to key generator. I'm going to copy these two imports, paste it in here, and then that is done. So that's our is valid method. We'll first check if the from address is null. If it is, then we assume it's valid. Then we'll check if there is a signature. If there is a signature, we are going to extract the public key from it. And then we're going to verify that this transaction has indeed been signed by that key. Next up, we are going to change our block class. So remember that in the previous video, we changed our block class so that it can contain multiple transactions. Well, in this class, I want to make a method that can verify all the transactions in the current block. So I'm going to say has valid transaction. And in here, we're going to iterate over all the transactions in the block. And we're just going to make sure that every transaction is valid. So we're going to say if the transaction is not valid, then we're going to return false because then the block does not contain valid transactions. Oops, and this should be an off. And if we looped through all the transactions and we haven't returned false, then we have to return true because all the transactions in this block are indeed valid. So that's just a little function that will make our lives a bit easier. Now we can change our blockchain class. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom to our is chain valid method. So this method goes over all the blocks in our chain and verifies that the hashes are correct and that each block links to the previous block. But we also have to verify that all the transactions in the current block are valid. So I'm going to make a new if statement here. I'm going to say if the current block has not all valid transactions, then we're going to say that our blockchain is in an invalid state. We're going to return false. And then we're going to change the method that adds new transactions to our blockchain. That's this one right here, create transaction. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to add transaction because we're not creating a transaction here. Instead, we're just receiving a transaction and we're pushing it into the pending transactions array. Then inside this function, we're going to perform a few checks. The first thing that we're going to check is that the from address and the to address is filled in. If not, then we throw an error. So we're going to say if transaction does not have a from address or transaction does not have a to address, then we're going to throw a new error and we're going to say transaction must include from and to address. Another check that we're going to do is we're going to verify that the transaction that we want to add is indeed valid. So we're going to say if transaction is not valid, then we're also going to throw a new error and we're going to say cannot add invalid transaction to the chain. And when we passed these two tests, then we can still push the transaction onto our pending transactions array. All right, that is it. Let me save the file. Let's now go to our main.js file to write some code to actually test all of this new functionality. The first thing that I'm going to do in here is I'm going to import our elliptic library again. So I'm going to copy it from key generator, or I can also copy it from blockchain, paste it in there. And then we're going to initialize our key. So we're going to say const my key equals we're going to say ec dot key from private. And in here we have to pass our private key. So I'm going to open up the little file that I made in the beginning. I'm going to copy the private key, paste it in there. And then I can also extract the public key or my wallet address. So I'm going to say const my wallet address equals my key dot get public. And we want that in hex format. Then we're still making a new instance of our blockchain class, and then we can make new transactions. Now I'm doing this here in one go, but instead I'm going to split it up into two operations. First, we're going to make a transaction. So we're going to say const tx1 equals a new transaction. That transaction goes from my own wallet to 
someone else's wallet. So here I would paste in the public key of someone else. Now I'm the only one on this blockchain for now. So I'm just going to say public key goes here. But in reality, you want the actual public key. And then I can define how much coins I want to send in this transaction. So let's say I want to send 10 coins. Then I have to sign my transaction. So I'm going to say TX1 dot sign transaction. And we're going to sign it with my key. And after it's been signed, I'm going to add it to the blockchain. I'm going to say SAVG coin dot add transaction TX1. All right. So now I can remove these two right here. We can start the miner and then we can check the balance of our coin. I'm going to remove the second mining uh, start. We don't really need it here. Now there's one more thing that we have to change. When we mine pending transaction, we have to tell where the mining reward should go to. So in this case, the mining reward will go to the wallet with address Xavier's address, but that address doesn't really exist. So if we do that, the coins would be sent to a wallet where no one can access them because no one has the private key of that wallet. So instead, we want the coins to be sent to my wallet address, which is my public key. And then the same thing goes for here. We're checking the balance of our wallet. So we have to check the balance of my wallet address. All right, let's save the file. Let's open up the terminal and let's test it. I'm going to say node main.js. And sure enough, our balance is now 90. Now, why 90? Well, remember that if I mine a block, I get 100 coins. And I've spent 10 of them right here. So that means that I have 90 left. So that all makes sense. Now, let's also try to tamper with the blockchain. Let's do a console log. And let's say is chain valid. And we're just going to say savvy coin dot is chain valid. So if I rerun the example, it will say my balance is still 90 because every time I run this script, it resets itself basically. But then it also says that our chain is valid. And that's because I haven't tampered with anything. But let's now try to actually tamper with something. So let's add a new line here. And let's go to Sanji coin. Let's take the chain, I'm going to take the second block on the chain, remember in JavaScript, we start counting from zero, zero is our Genesis block. So index one is the block that contains our transaction. Then we're going to say we're going to take the first transaction in there. And we're going to try to change the amount we're going to say, well, I didn't send 10 coins, I only sent one coin, for instance, let's save the file. And let's see what happens. Now I'm going to rerun it. And now it says is the chain valid? Oh, nope, it's not valid because the signature doesn't match up anymore. So that was it for this video. We have made it possible for people to sign their transactions with a private key. And that means that now if a person creates a new wallet, creates a new key pair, he is the only one who can spend the coins in that wallet. Now the code for this little blockchain is available on GitHub. The link will be down in the description below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider getting subscribed. And as always, thank you very much for watching.